This episode is brought to you by David Renshaw and Gemma Archer. Stephen! Andrew! Fancy spending a quiet night inside number nine? Yeah, I do. In we go. Series nine, episode four. Control Alt Escape, directed by George Kane, produced by Steve Ride, written by Steve Pemberton and Reese Shearsmith, and it first aired on Wednesday the 29th of May 2024. Whoa. Whoa. Wasn't it good? Oh, so good. This has gone straight in as one of my favourites, I think. Just packed so much of a punch. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited to talk about this and to get yeah. right into it. Um, I will do the synopsis. I, I think this is slightly shorter than previous ones. I Ooh. brought it back because okay. I, it was getting it a bit out of control. Yeah. Was it? <laughs> it was getting out of hand. It was becoming a way for you to just flex your... What? Flex something? <laughs> it was, I was flexing something and it was taking up most of my week writing them. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, So seemingly against their will... Jason's reluctant family find themselves with him in the killer's lair, not their first escape room. It seems important to Jason as a final chance for the family to be together before Millie departs for university. Is the escape room the setting they need to reboot the system and open their eyes to a better future together? Mm. I mean, I could probably talk for about 30 minutes just on the title alone, based on Mm -hmm. what we know about it at the end. That's the thing with this and trying to talk about this is there's lots of different ways to do so. I obviously went back and watched it again. So it's one of those ones that's quite difficult to watch again and try and think about how you were feeling first time around mm-hmm. because I thought it was straight up sore. <laughs> oh, I mean, I remember how I was feeling first time around completely yes. on edge and tense yeah. and like, what is going to happen yes, here? Massively so. Oh, is that when that um, that little doorway opened up and the family started crawling through? I thought, oh no, what yeah. is? Oh no, what's he going to have to watch going on? I mean, that kind of became true later on anyway. Um, but I thought it was just going to be straight up horror. Yeah, and that's kind of the feeling I was getting right from the off. It, it felt it was. It was built, the the misdirection was there and was really well done right from the off. It felt like it was going to be a straight horror. Yeah. There was so much foreboding doom that, yeah, just the setup. And then, you know, saying if the door opens, he's come, Dr. Death has come home, yep. hide. <laughs> like, oh. Oh, he'll be yeah. back then. <laughs> that will happen. Yes. Not Reese dressed up as Dr. Death, as I was expecting to happen. Yeah, I guess I th- I was thinking Reese was probably some kind of twisted individual, um, but then also this is a commercial escape room as far as we know. So would that happen to everybody who goes in there? I don't, I don't know. I don't I, think you'd stay in business for long. Sweeney Todd did quite well as a barber for a while, didn't he? I suppose he did. Yeah. So. You don't always expect, well, (laughs) I mean, I said that as though Sweeney Todd's real. (laughs) There you go. Game, set, match on that argument. (laughs) Good point. (laughs) I think the the red really set that horror tone. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, obviously being chained to something was that sore vibe. And the the black light, because the the real switch into what felt like it was going to be yeah. Proper proper horror was when he lit the black light and it and was and found the handprints and stuff. And it said no escape. Like, okay, here we go. And then Doctor Death walks in. You like, all right? Yeah, <laughs> this is bad. This is everything I thought it was going to be, and possibly worse. But then that weird moment when he almost gets the attention of Doctor Death. Yes, and Doctor Death's surprised that yes. he's there. So it's. Oh, he's not coming for him in that moment. And then he snaps out of it and suddenly Reese is running or Doug is running into the room. That felt a bit, um, there was a, some stuff in this that felt a bit of vanilla sky. 
Mm, kind of being in different states and kind of being in like a lucid dream yeah. state, especially with the opening of the eyes at the end as well. And that yeah. there, and that little bit there when he was under the covers and he's not really sure what's going on because he seems to be in this really sort of lucid, exp having this lucid experience of Dr. Death being in there, dragging the axe around, coming after him and then suddenly snap mm. something. He's, he's somewhere else entirely. It's it's all fine. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's a lot of in and out of levels of consciousness. Mm. And um, yeah, I think, should we just do what we have tended to do and and move through it? I guess so. And then I guess we'll double back at the end and go back to clues and things that, have, that were planted throughout the episode. So we'll sort of go through it at face value. Yeah. Yeah. I, d I did think um, the music was very similar to the harrowing. Yeah, I know what you mean. Right. Welcome to Locked and Loaded, room nine, which we call the Killer's Lair. Are we all ensconced? Excellent. So have any of you done an escape room before? Yes, we all have. We've all been forced to do one, you mean? Jason's a big fan. Are you, darling? Well, I wouldn't say that, but uh, we have done a lot of the local ones. Most recently, the haunted submarine at Endgame in Chester. Oh, yeah, yeah, I hear they, uh, they're uh, pretty decent. Did all the props work? Yeah. yeah. Well, most of them did. Yeah, but there was a remote control that needed new batteries. Yeah, yeah, doesn't surprise me. They're known for cutting corners. We start looking at a monitor that is showing CCTV looking at escape room number nine at Locked and Loaded. And we see a family enter the room. I did think that CCTV aspect was going to play a lot more of a part than it did. Mm. But we were going to keep cutting out and seeing them in there. <clears throat> but that yes, didn't yeah. come to pass. No, it didn't. Yeah, so we meet the family. And this room is the killer's lair. Yeah. And it turns out they've done a lot of escape rooms as a family. Um, yeah, Jason's a big fan. <laughs> He They've is. been to the one in Chester. Doug is a is a great little character. Um, at whatever level you take him, <laughs> yeah. he's, I love his little torch thing. He keeps yeah. on screwing up his torch and getting it the wrong way up. Um, I guess that is a a torch that he has as a as a nurse. Uh, yeah. Um, although why he kept putting it the wrong way? <laughs> well, I suppose it would be facing that way because it's almost shining it into. Jason and into Jason's eyes. I guess what I really like is the idea that he does the same thing, but as a nurse. <laughs> so he keeps on trying to shine it in people, uh, people, pupils, and getting himself in the face. Yeah. <laughs> and then having to tell some sort <laughs> of oh, ghost story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. I better. Okay. Um, Ollie Plimpsoul vibes. Very I'm much so. Actor. Yeah. Legs akimbo. The uh, the three man much ado tour of German schools. Yes. <laughs> It would have been great. Very exciting. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, so it you're getting the vibe from Jason that he's very much a... he What he wants to do, the family has to follow at this stage. So he's dragging them around the escape rooms. He's kind of built as a, as a bit of an unsettling character mm. in this first bit. It kind of things were pointing to him a little bit as being a not very nice guy who's a bit controlling, and especially with the Fritzel reference and stuff dropped in. Yeah, like everything was kind of pointing towards him being a bit of a nasty piece of work. Yeah, there is absolutely. I think, and the tentative. It's almost like the rest of the family are treading on eggshells a little bit around him, mm. and just being like, "Well, we just do what he." needs us to do this is his this is about him this is you know his favorite thing to do so just make dad happy <laughs> um yeah i think and so with that talking about the haunted submarine at end game in chester yes um you can maybe, tell me you've been <laughs> no i was i was just thinking maybe we maybe we can maybe it is worth just talking about the seeds yeah okay to yes. the end um because i don't think it's gonna it's not gonna be easy not to that's true 
But because um, this, I was thinking, is this a uh, alluding to what happened to him to put him into this coma? Well, that what that's something I've I've carried on wondering. What might is there a clue in the episode somewhere that I that I didn't really pick up on? Well, it's the, so this is like it's the haunted submarine. He's obviously military of some description. Um, whether the haunted submarine is actually talking about where he like what caused his situation Mm -hmm. um because there's the they talk about a remote control needing new batteries that because they talk about the props did the props work because they're obviously notorious for the props failing um and uh lynn says there's a remote control needed new batteries so whether that's like a there was a an error or negligence um and then they say they're known for cutting corners um so whether that's a yeah, there was a industrial accident. Maybe. Um, I don't know. Smoke alarm was pulled out. Yeah. <laughs> Stag and Hindus hen- are the worst. <laughs> that made me think, we, who's... Was it, it was Jeff's stag do we went to an escape room, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. What was it? It was some kind of... Was it like a Sherlock type? Yeah, thing? possibly. Yeah. wasn't like this. No, <laughs> thankfully. No. This is when they are, uh, yeah, they talk about the C word, which I assume is is coma. <laughs> that would be the the C word I'm I'm taking from this at the end of it. Oh yeah, yeah. All of this is kind of. You're right about the family being very tentative, but they, it doesn't take long for mum and daughter to get quite into it. Not Millie though. Millie's Millie's well out. Speaking of the props, Doug's clearly very very proud of not having props that break down yet later in the episode there's a yeah. big issue with the computer that, st- that stops him from actually being able to take part in the um, escape room experience properly yeah a very significant prop well not a prop a an actual well operating part of the room <laughs> yeah i did wonder i mean we'll get to that a bit later but what did you see as the reason for that not working? In as in the real world? Yes. You mean? I mean, there's something, I guess, there about him being shut down and him, his his mind having frozen because it hasn't been used. It's been in a sleep state, I guess. Yeah. Because a lot of what the, what he's doing, Doug, as he's coming in, is checking his vitals. Yeah. Um, and the whole thing of like it needing a manual reboot. Or is he getting the manual reboot and that, that's what's kicking Yeah, maybe, yeah. him into waking up if that's actually what happens. Get to that later. Looks like you're going to have to find a key for that. <laughs> oh no, why is it always me? Because you're the most competitive. Excuse yes. me, wanting to succeed at something isn't the same as being competitive. No, but making your daughter cry because she couldn't guess Squid Game at Charades comes pretty high on the list. There's no such thing as octopus tennis. Oh, it's all right, Dad. I forgive you. We've had the escape room kind of built up. Um, Doug's thrown some shade at his competitors. <laughs> and then we've got the, the whole Doctor Death story. Yeah. Um, who likes to experiment on his victims. Um, and then he atta- attaches Jason to the bed, which for me would be a real red flag in an escape room. Like, no, whoa, 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 what? <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, but the, the reaction is like, oh, that's happened this again. again then. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And again, like, obviously that's a huge seed of him yes. being locked to the bed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and we kind of get a sense of Jason's competitiveness from, was it Charades? Oh, Squid Game. <laughs> Octopus. What was it? Octopus Tennis. Octopus Tennis isn't a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there seems to be a lot here of of him sort of reminiscing about things. Hmm. Um, him thinking back to, to things that have happened in the past. And I, I don't know if... Because... If we think about him being kind of introduced as a slightly unsettling, unpleasant character, this is a version of him in his head. Yeah. And all these things about him acting unreasonably and him saying not very nice things about ex-girlfriends and things like that are all a reflection of how 
he sees himself or the character that he believes he is. Mm. So I think there's quite a lot of introspection in yeah. a lot of this dialogue yeah. about sort of regrets and things like that. Yeah, his own, how he's perceiving himself. Yeah. yeah. And then with the with his family, there's like a mixture of, obviously the bleed from the things that they're saying in the room. Yeah. Um, but also I think there's a, because Amy seems like a an exaggerated version of what she's probably actually like, because she's she seems very um, innocent and very loving and kind of just really nice to a to an extreme of like that's more than a, I've ever known anybody to be like yeah. that. Um, and so, yeah, she seems very close to him. Like she forgives him for that octopus tennis thing. And, yeah. Um, and then Millie is kind of the opposite um, yes. until they have that heart to heart. And she's yeah, ve- just very dismissive and cynical and down on everybody else and, and all of that. So, and we see a hint of that at the end when she responds to Doug or Doug as the nurse. Um, nurse Doug. But yeah, it's kind of like, that's just a, a expression of her anger at the situation. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so then her, his perception of her in that unconscious state or subconscious state is like an extreme. Where version. she's making jokes about the fact that the only way to get them together is to put them into a windowless room with a piss stained mattress with a yeah. yeah piss stained mattress um and i guess there might be some hospital thought hospital thinking there as well mm. trapped in that room um yeah, yeah and then she and true. then she makes the fritzel joke there's a little till death to his part <laughs> yes there. very much so <laughs> um, yeah yeah and she she's the one that tells us that Jason takes control as soon as the game starts. He's like, right, taking control. This yep. is going to be our central, like we're going to use this desk as our control point. And then, and then she says, you're not in the army now. You got invalided out. Remember? Um, yep. so then we get that. Okay. That's, um, the situation he's in. And we also have the first part of our title there. Control. Yeah. Alt. Are you taking that as alternate reality? I think so, yeah. And then trying yeah. to escape. Which Does and he escape? I guess the 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 end is revealed in the title itself. Because escape. the alternative is control alt delete and he's not deleted. True. And he's fighting against the deletion. Cause they're going to delete him. If that is indeed how you see the last scene. Smilly. Enough of the attitude now, please. We're trying to do a nice thing for Dad. Oh, yeah, really nice. A windowless room with a piss stained mattress. Well, look on the bright side. It'll help you get used to your university digs. Uh-huh. Anyway, this isn't just for me. It's for all of us to spend some quality time together as a family. <laughs> but that's what Mr. Fritzel said. Yeah, so he's taking control, isn't he? They start kind of looking for clues around the room. He's the expert, so I, or he definitely sees himself as the expert in the room, so he... He is pushing them towards the sorts of things they should be looking for. And in reality, they're probably all right. Yeah. This is a Steve special again. <laughs> the, the he loves it. He clearly <laughs> loves an escape room. Yeah. All the little all the little tricks and things. <laughs> it's just like Riddle of the Sphinx, like just basking in the yeah, telling people how the crossword works. Yeah. Yeah. And um they start finding pictures of girls who I believe are them. They are, aren't they? They are. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I didn't imagine that. <laughs> no, I thought, I was, I was like, that is definitely yes, Amy them. first up. And then, what do you notice about this? Uh, it's it's me. <laughs> but that's something I've only really picked up going backwards, really. Because first time round, I just saw generic picture of young female. That's kind right. of what I saw in those pictures. That I didn't actually click that it was them. Until I went back and watched it again, and went, "Oh, hang on a minute! It's it's something that makes sense when going backwards." But in the initially, because that should be a massive flag that something well, I, something absolutely terrible is about to happen, because there are already pictures of these young girls in the room. Because <laughs> well, the first one, 
that is Amy, the blonde one, I looked at and thought, that looks so much like her. But the fact that they didn't mention that yeah. was like, oh, I must be wrong. Yes. Might, must. Um, but yeah, I was thinking exactly the same thing. Like, if they responded to seeing that picture as like, <gasps> yes. like, they've been expecting us. Like, this is planned. Yeah. What What's the situation? You know, but it, they didn't react like that. So it was like, mm, okay, it must not be her. Yes, exactly. So I, I kind of felt like I got it wrong. But yeah. no, when you go back and you watch it, no, you're right. It's them. It's definitely them. Right. So, okay, what do you see? A girl. Anything else? A dead girl. If you reflect on it. Oh, oh yeah. a seven. Sammy is a seven. Mm. Well done, Millie. Yep. Nice one. Yeah. Always pays to check the mirrors. Sometimes the two way. <laughs> At this point, it's all kind of fairly standard escape room stuff, really, isn't it? Yeah. Until until you go back and he's reflecting on his ex girlfriend, um, Georgina, Georgie um, Porgy, Georgie Porgy. Um, there's the strange bit with the mirror, where he he takes a very long look in that mirror and he's got a strange look on his face because he kind of checks it and breathes on it to see if it was a two-way uh, two way mirror. Yeah, two-way mirror. Yeah. Um, and then he just sort of lingers on it mm. for quite a long time and says, like, you're feeling that being watched, which obviously they are because they're in an escape room and of course he's being watched. Yeah, um, which is what you kind of, to some degree, put it down to Yes, and then but then there's also that sinister thing of like, oh, something's Someone happening else here. Watching, yeah. <laughs> yeah, who's watching this? And then there's this seeming little subplot that then starts to happen involving the conversation with Millie and her mum, mm. and because of the way it's all been set up with everything feeling quite tense, when they start talking about something that mum's going to do later. I'm thinking she's leaving. That's she's, what I was thinking. She's off. Yeah. She's she's leaving him and he doesn't know about it yet. Yeah. It turns out she's not the one that's going to be leaving. But I, I guess th- this is them quietly having this conversation in the corner of the ho- of the hospital room. Yeah. Well, um, Amy and cuz Amy and Jason cuz I think again like there's there's almost these heart to hearts that go on for each of Mm. them. So this is where Amy, I think is doing her goodbye. Um, so he's, she's with him at the bedside while, um, Lynn and Millie are further away having their conversation. He's obviously can hear that they're talking, but he can't hear what what they're saying, but yeah. And that's Amy's kind of attempting to solve the, the clues yeah uh, in his mind um which is like that's a bit of a stretch (laughs) (laughs) um but yeah that that exchange between lynn and millie is really it really threw me because it's like Mm. why does millie know what's happening later and jason doesn't keep playing happy families they don't keep secrets live with it this is this that's the reference to turning off the life support, I guess. That this yeah. is a decision that whilst they're sat there in the room together and it's still mum, dad and the two girls. Yeah. Um Yeah. And and then the heart to heart between Lynn and Jason happens, doesn't it? Um yeah, after they've Yeah, he has a nice bit of ego ego stroking from Amy who Oh, you're so clever, Dad. Yeah. When he works <laughs> oh, yeah. No. It's eight. Yeah, so <laughs> of course. Um, yeah, and there's that because then there's the green stiletto moment. Um, yes. And he's like, "Damn it, I hate not being able to do anything." Yes. And then tells tells Lynn, "You're looking for a green stiletto," and she says, "I know, Jace. I'm not an idiot." Um, which Very is kind intense. of a yeah. It's like he is. Is this, are we seeing a slightly reminiscent of the insufferable explainer of things in the trolley problem? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, as you say, heart to heart number two between Jason and, and Lynn. It's probably not the final heart to heart, but 
is they yeah they have a moment well she's she's having her because i guess millie's little chat with her there has probably kicked up some guilt Mm. um that she's decided to then kind of deal with by going over and just reminding him how much she loves him yeah it's been a hot so it's been a really hard couple of years so it's so I don't know whether that's how long he's been in his coma or whether he was away. If your if your idea about the accident in the submarine in the military hmm. is is kind of part there, of that two years. Is that part of that two years was spent with him on the on the submarine or out on military service somehow? That would have made it a hard couple of years as well, I guess. Um, yeah, I, I think I interpreted that as he's been. Away, he's in the coma. Actually, you think so? The only thing with that is, is that there's a cert, there's something that feel when they're in the hospital that feels like they aren't that used to this situation. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I, and I suppose know. that because I was thinking, you know, the Mil- the Millie stuff around him not being a being there for her, and yes. If but he was yeah, away that, on service a lot of the time, that would that, still work with that anyway. Yeah, I guess if he's been completely out of the loop when they've talked about Millie needing therapy, it would make sense that he was out of that loop because he was in his coma, and so she was needing therapy to deal with. I think it's related to the situation. What went yeah. on with the situation? What yeah. went on with the accident? Him now being trapped in this coma. Yeah. Um, I saw someone saying that when he said, I don't like being excluded from these conversations felt not in keeping with the way the, the way the episode pans out and like it had almost an unnecessary sinister um, thing to it. And I was like, no, that's exactly what would be said. That's exactly how we'd be feeling because they're having conversations about his future essentially or, his, or lack thereof <laughs> yeah um and you can imagine that kind of thing being you know when you think about people maybe people who have dementia or are in other situations where they're unable to make decisions for themselves but they have an awareness that yeah um other people are having what are you saying about take, me what, what are you yeah. saying and so it's like actually i thought that line was perfect um, it all, so i mean it i think was their complaint that it was almost overly misdirecting because it did it did contribute to the sense of him being a controlling. Bit of a controlling nasty piece of work. Yeah. But you're saying that the complaint that it did that but didn't really work in terms of what plays out yeah, doesn't I make think, sense because it does. I think maybe it just didn't occur to the person posting it that actually that would be something that you might feel. Um, oh, I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah, why, yeah. Why, why are you saying these things about me? What What, what do you mean? Yeah. In, involve me, please. I still love you. What are you talking about? You're not leaving me, are you? Oh, will you two get a room, please? What's up? Don't you like seeing your parents doing a bit of bondage? Necrophilia, more like. Oh, really? I'm getting a clue. Oh, come on! You can't do that. We've only been here 10 minutes. So? He's right. You can't go calling for backup just yet. I thought you told me never to be afraid to ask for help. Yeah. Oh, there's also that line about, oh, don't you like seeing your parents doing a bit of bondage? Yes. <laughs> Necrophilia, more like. And Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because why, why necrophilia? He's, he's uh, fully alive on the bed. Like. <laughs> I know. He's sat up. I can't <laughs> remember what, what I thought first time around hearing that line. Doctor death, murder victim, maybe. Yeah. Mm. Someone's got something wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then Doug gives that the first hint, which I love. He's like delivering it in a very abstract way. And Millie's yeah. like, just tell us, like, who, what is it they're looking for? It w- yeah, it was tracing the tracing the girl's movements on the map. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's it. Getting yeah. number five. Try and map her movements. Is yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah I and did. Amy, Amy gets very excited. Yeah, because I did find that over the course of the episode, 
Jason gets quicker and quicker to lean on clues because mm. he's very reluctant at this point. He's like, no, 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 we don't ask for cues. And later on in the episode, like the space bar one. <laughs> yeah. He was straight on to that one. Like, come, what's the Paul Edward? We yeah. need this. We need this done now. He want. He doesn't like this anymore. Um, I don't know whether that's him starting to piece some things together and thinking, oh, "I haven't got long here." Yeah, just this needs to it. shift along. And I, that that's one of my favourite exasperated Doug bits. When Doug's like, "There's a lot of space. You could put a bar in it. Space, space for, for a, a bar. bar. Space, space bar. bar. It's just a space bar. Do the space bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the numbers." Um, cause we've got, what we've got eight, six, seven, five is the order that Millie re- says them, but it's obviously eight, seven, six, five. Yeah. I think is the count, is it a countdown? Is this like a, Oh, maybe. Or I, I was trying to figure out room nine, eight, seven, six, five, four letter words. Yes. There must be a three in there. A two and then it's a single digit one yeah yeah i think you're right so it's like a countdown to the 60 minutes yeah because i think you've got 60 minutes to solve the clues yeah it is basically like the switch off is happening in 60 minutes yeah yeah so then the passageway opens up yes and i did not like this I did not like this at all. <laughs> no. I was feeling pretty horrified when they started crawling down through that passageway and thought, oh no. I found Lynn, Lynn's willingness to go down the passageway yes. f- was, did that sort of unsettled Unnerving. me? Yes, yeah. it was, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's like, does she know something or yeah. is she about to get something happen to her? Do we, um, any sense of relevance for the passageway opening? Only the fact that it was a different kind of light. So it was like, almost like a light tunnel, light okay. at the end of the tunnel, kind heading of towards the light, don't heading head to- towards the light. <laughs> but obviously they're going toward, they're leaving him in mm-hmm. the dark, not leaving yeah. him in the dark. There you go. Um, yeah, because in this moment he's he's sort of peering around the corner while they're doing these. They've found this uh, the the cabinet move, and they go down the passageway. And he's he's like, "What's happening?" And he's, so he's he's he lost Millie, control again. He's yeah, he begs Millie to stay back, and he says, "I can't do this by myself." Um, and then they have their heart to heart here, don't they? Yeah, he says, and this is this all makes a lot more sense when you know what happens later. And she says, you don't listen. I do. I hear everything you say. Um, and he's really worried about her going off to university, terrified of his firstborn leaving. I'm so proud of you. I just want you to hear that. And you leaving will kill me, I think he says as well, yes. doesn't he? Yeah. So there's like all sorts of seeds there that, um, yeah, have very much a double meaning and the ice skating story. So, and that's the bleed. She's obviously talking about that to him. Yeah. In the room. This is what she's sort of reminiscing about. Um, and yeah, that, and it's clearly a big thing for them because there's that, that picture. Yeah. In the star frame, in the star frame, yeah. By the bed, um, at the end that we see. So that's clearly a big thing moment that he kind of, feels very fondly about and then weirdly this kind of sentimental moment is broken up by her tipping a load of fingers out of the box which is like (laughs) dr death likes going ice skating (laughs) okay yeah and like the coincidence of that was strange it was like like, what they are fingers are you a fan of ice skating you like ice skating um I do when I've kind of been there for a little bit and I've remembered that I can do it a bit. Mm. Um, it's, it's a long way down. 
I'm six yeah. feet tall. It's a long hard, way. Hard to floor as well, isn't it? <laughs> it yeah, it, it, it's not a natural way to get around. And there is something about the the, the, blades the kind of and blades the, and yes, the finger yes, situation. Yes. And I think yeah. you're, it's one of those things that I think it's a almost an overstated risk, but for a reason that you hear that once. The first thing you do when you hit that ice, you pull your fingers in. And that's yeah. why people don't get their fingers sliced up on a regular that's basis true. because they're cautious about it. <laughs> yeah. there, is, there, is quite, there is very much a uh, uh, public service broadcast yes, style of yeah. terrifying <laughs> fear of... <laughs> Getting your fingers Are you thinking of up? taking your children ice skating? Remember, <laughs> <laughs> here's a box of fingers. These are, these all came from children who went ice skating. <laughs> Remember, <laughs> tuck them in, or they'll be sliced off. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. Then we hear the tannoy kick in, don't we? Oh, this is this this is then very on the nose, really, isn't it? The one-way sound. The one-way sound where they're talking to him and he can't communicate back. Um, he's kind of left on his... Left to his own device, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, well, this is... Yeah, because I think Lynn says they need Millie in order to solve this problem here. So then there's that separation. Mm-hmm. Um, and Jason yeah, that's very, shouts um, to Lynn. I, I, I didn't like that at all. Because it felt like she, it felt like she perhaps didn't want to say that. Oh, we need all three of us here. Yeah, to solve this, there's only what we can only do it with all three of us. That's a weird thing. Yeah, it felt like that, she was separating them off away from him. Yes. So something, something could happen was either to happen. them, or she was being forced to say it to bring Millie down to them, so something could unfold in that room. It felt horrible. Yeah. There was sinister. Undertones, um, overtones, I was say overtones. I don't wandering know. free. <laughs> this is the yeah. second time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Undertones, overtones. Ever fallen in love with a womble? <laughs> <laughs> That's Buzzcocks. <laughs> um, yeah, and here we. So when he's left on his own, he lets out quite a big sigh at this point, mm-hmm. um, which sounds like he's on a respirator. When you obviously mm-hmm. know what's happened. Don't let Dr. Death come for you. I can take him. Lynn, if you can hear me, Millie's on her way to you now, okay? Lynn? It's very obvious that he's a seasoned veteran of the escape rooms. I wouldn't have thought there's a pipe I need a hook with a magnet on it. <laughs> no. No, I actually learned quite a lot if we I have. If, if we I go, go into an escape room again, to look I will. Out for. Yeah. Well, I remember from the episode of Inside Number Nine. Mm. <laughs> Although if it's anything like my ability to solve cryptic crosswords <laughs> off the back of Riddle of the Sphinx, no. I could do I the ones that they talk about in Riddle of the Sphinx. But if, I could do that. I could do the stuff from that escape room. Yeah, if there's yeah, some, exactly. if there's some numbers of paper clips that need organising, I'm there. Yeah, I think I'd have got that one. The RGB, mm, just yeah. like red, red, green, blue, yellow. The no, the no U. The U was crossed out. Yeah. I noticed. Yeah, um, which is a that has double meaning, I suppose. Absolutely. And this like is the, you clever bastard. You, you, <laughs> you, really you, enjoy, you clever bastard. Yes. Clever girl. And no one's there to see me. No. <laughs> um and yeah, the thing that he so that gives him access to the magnet hook and he fishes out the black light torch from the um bottom of the pipe. And this is where the real horror tone kicks in. There's words let there be light. Nothing ever good comes from shining a black light around a room. It doesn't. No. <laughs> anything you find from a black Absolutely. light. Absolutely. <laughs> no, you're never going to find anything that, desirable, are you? <laughs> yeah, this is terrifying. And um, the weird sort of hand prints obviously turn out to match his. Yeah. 
Yes. Also, hand. what was that picture? The oh, picture I don't, on the yeah. wall that he moved was quite unsettling. I don't know if it was meant yeah. to be, but it looked off. <laughs> Um, so yeah, no escape. No escape. And then and it's then, where he puts his hand on that print, and then it's almost like that unlocks the door as Doctor Death arrives. Yes, Doctor um, Death. And then obviously the respirator sounds because he's a bit like Darth Vader breathing sounds, yeah. isn't he? So he hides oh. in the bed. Um, Doctor Death heads over, grabs the axe. And he's dragging it towards Jason. Um, and then suddenly snaps out of it, dugs back in the room and boots up the computer that wasn't working. Yeah. It's like he has a sudden snap out of it. He doesn't dwell on that too much. There's no, what, what's, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> what's happening? No, no it, it's almost figure, like. Has the figure moved? I think it has because it was in yeah. the bathroom behind the bit. curtain thing. Yeah, yeah, and then it's much more prominent. Yes, it is. Yeah, in the room. Um, I don't know. I have to go back and look whether it act- whether it's just the perspective you see in the room Maybe. from, or whether it has actually moved. Um, so he's yeah. There's a thing here about the his daughters are uh, coping with it. Well, so do you think on a brave face? Yeah, do you think they've le- they've left the like obviously them going down the tunnel, maybe representing they've left the room and Doug's come into the room, and is just talking. I imagine so. I imagine that probably goes on a lot. Yeah, where it's sort of wandered into the room and they sort of try and interact and. and this is why because I think chat. he's because he, he he's checking for vitals all the time. Like they're yes. doing everything they can to to check to make sure that he doesn't this have any the right thing. brain function. and um, So, yeah, maybe he's then talking about the daughter seem to be coping with it. Yeah. Um, and Jason, re- either that or they're putting on a brave... Or oh, is it... They're yeah, putting on a brave face. Putting on a brave face. Which is a, which is a weird thing to say about In an, escape, an room. escape room. I know it's, I know it's a horror-based escape room, but it's not the sort of thing that... I think they're pretending to enjoy it. It would be a more likely yeah. thing to say than they're putting on a brave face. They're, they're doing they, all they I can. think they're pretending to enjoy it probably wouldn't then <laughs> No, scan. it wouldn't work with this. No. <laughs> I think they're pretending to enjoy it. <laughs> you, you sick, what? sick man. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> um, and yeah, so he, the computer is then on and, he, and Doug says, they can talk to you, but you'll need to find a way to communicate with them. Yeah. Um, very Diving Bell and the Butterfly. I was really, really took me back to Diving Bell and the Butterfly, yeah. It's one of the worst things I can think of. That, that And that's like this, this whole situation here where he's conscious, kind of. Yeah. And he can hear what they're saying. Not quite, I mean, they haven't got to the sense yet that he knows exactly what's going on and he knows that he's about to be offed. <laughs> Yeah. But being trapped inside must be dreadful. It's uh, yeah, it's that scene in Diving Bell and the Butterfly when he's watching the football and a nurse comes in and either turns it off or like moves it so he can't see it anymore. Mm. Um, and you can hear him shouting in his yes. in his head, and then it pans out, and you just see him just completely motionless in the bed and it's just like oh it's absolutely like heartbreaking and so claustrophobic like it there's it does something as you're watching it that's like oh i just yeah you cannot imagine the pain of that like yeah it's just horrible horrible situation and that's kind of where he is at the moment where he's he, he needs to find a way to communicate with them some somehow and that's where kind of i felt like um the whole Morse code thing kind of put me in mind of that as well, where yeah, with the, the alphabet, yeah, that obviously they found a better way of <laughs> working through the alphabet than a, 
be because that yeah. will <laughs> be horrendous. Um, so yeah, yeah. And this is obviously he's he's obviously given he's he's been given time here because um, Doug says I'll be watching. So again, yeah. you know, they're really keeping an eye. Like we're looking for signs of vital reactions yeah. and all of that stuff. Um, so he's got a chance here. Um, you've just and got to find what, a way to communicate. And that's the thing is, this is where he suddenly, like I said before, he suddenly now starts to seek clues more readily. Yeah. So he's straight here. So he's, he gets told by the family that he need, they need a four letter word. Um, there's your four. Yeah. Quickly. Um, and so he's straight in with, okay, I need a clue. What is it? Help me out. He's he's far more open to it, and I guess he's he's sensing that he's picked up on that urgency mm. from what Doug's just said to him. Yeah, and then he gives it very quickly. Yes. Um. Yeah, star. And there's this lovely moment where he's almost seeming a little bit at peace with oh, this his family working together. Incredible scene. Him. It's the yeah. music. I, the music kind of the comes piano goes. The there's like this upbeat, yeah, or like positive. He's so happy mood to change. watch them, just sort of without him. He's he almost looks like he's accepting it hmm. somehow that his family can do this without him. Um, and then Doctor Dead appears, <laughs> and that like with like just breaking into that peaceful moment and that yeah. celebratory moment. It, that is incredible. Like that, the way that scene is is done is so just unsettling. Phenomenal, yeah. Yes, finally. see the hair i weirdly wasn't looking for the hair oh but spot him paused i <laughs> paused the when i was watching it for the second time i paused it and the hair is there oh, i was like it? whoa <laughs> i paused it on the hair <laughs> yeah it's like in the in that cupboard cupboard oh bit. okay yeah in the cabinet yeah and, and then panic sets in and the girls are screaming and then we start oh. getting some intercut with him lying in the hospital bed. Yeah. And then he starts sh- sh- screaming that he needs to get out. He needs help. Why can't you hear me? Like pa- proper panic. The weird oh. thing here is that it feels like a, a late twist, but it's 20 minutes in. It's, it's only two thirds of the way in. We've still got another third of the episode to, to go. It's not late. No. At all. There's still quite a lot to go here. Um so yeah, he's pleading on the radio and then we cut out and we see that Doug is actually a nurse in the hospital and he's with mum and the girls who are all sat at the hospital beds. And Doug's job is to do a last check of the vitals, putting the light mm-hmm. in his eyes. A little bit disappointed that, it, like I say, he didn't shine it in his own eyes first. Yeah. I think that would have been cracking. <laughs> um, so yeah, Millie and Millie and Amy have managed to get out, haven't they? Yeah, they managed to escape, and their mum joins. Doctor Death is here for Jason. Yeah, yeah. That when when Millie shouts, "It's not a game, Dad. It's real." Yeah, like that. That's a that gave me sort of chills. Yes. Yeah. So they then they then do a runner somewhere. I don't know where he thinks they go. Mm. Do they? Does he think they run out of the room? I, there's not far they could have gone. Well, I guess it's it's now the realization that I'm on my own. I am on my own here. Yes. Like I I've got to do this myself. 
Um, Because you hear a million on the tannoy, like, you've just got to get yourself out, Dad. You can do it. I know you can. And Mum's just slipped him the key. Yeah. Um, What that key is, I don't know. No. In terms of the bigger picture. She has provided him with something to get himself out. To get himself at least unlocked from the bed. Yes. Mm, yeah. So we're back at the doctor at the hospital, Dr. Morton. Yeah. Nice name. It is. <laughs> Dr. Death. Death. Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is. <laughs> um, he's quite a scary doctor, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Very What's much. The, who's the actor? Uh, is he in um, Peep Show? Oh, he's April's husband. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. There's the yeah, the whole thing with April, and he's interested in all the things that Mark's interested in. Yeah, yes, that's him. <laughs> I knew I knew that face. Yeah, it's, it's a <laughs> it's a distinctive face. He does have a distinctive face. Yeah. Oh, he. Oh, his name is actually Angus as well. Yeah, Apparently, Angus right, but, but he's not to, Angus. According to the Peep Show podcast. Podcast Secrets of the Pharaohs, <laughs> the character name of Angus was devised before Angus Wright was cast. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> it must happen. <laughs> I I have a I genuinely feel that everyone should only ever play characters with the same first name that they actually have. <laughs> that is that a, a hill thing. on which you're willing to I die? say I think it is. Every <laughs> character in Inside Number Nine <laughs> should be called played Steve by Steve Pemberton is called Steve. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> be easier for doing the podcast. It would. It would be much easier. That's partly, I think, why this is a hill I'm wanting to die on. Because well, I've been doing this mainly, for years now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe to make this podcast easier. But I'd have to say, or Doug, as his name actually is in this, not Reese. Just call him Reese. Yeah. What no, difference exactly. would it make if he was called Reese? I'm not sure his name is actually even mentioned in the entire episode. Is it not? I don't know. It's just on the credits. No, I guess there's no real need to, is there? Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel a bit sorry for Dr. Death, Dr. Morton. Yeah, he's cast as a psychotic, <laughs> axe-wielding maniac who is actually a very serious medical professional who just wants to do his job well. Yeah. And actually, and he isn't, in some respect, in suffering. Yeah. And he's not being reckless. No. He's not throwing an axe around, is he? Not in real life, no. <laughs> or metaphorically. <laughs> he's <laughs> Yeah, no, he's, he's following procedure very much. So you're right, he is Yeah. Poor guy. Poor guy. <laughs> um Yeah, and this is where we because he goes through the you know, the process that's gonna happen as they turn off the life support machine is gonna be a muscle relaxant because of the breathing, almost like agony. It's a, yes. a, a really horrific word. That, yeah. And then Lynn's like, what does that mean? Which we've all thought around doctors anyway, I think. What does that mean? What are you talking about? Um, and they say they've run all the tests and they're as certain as they can be that Jason no longer has any brain function. Um, which is, I mean, this, like, I was, my immediate thought after watching this was like, I really hope that anyone who's been in that situation of having to make a decision like that hasn't oh, just awful. watched this. Because I think it would, obviously, aside from bringing up all sorts of horrific memories, like that, mm. that idea of, the what's going on in his brain um yeah would be yes not very nice to to deal with I, yeah no. i was thinking obviously you can't really put warnings specific warnings on ahead of shows like this but like yeah. that would have been a a one yes i don't know yeah, if yeah. you've ever had to turn off a loved one's life support machine 
you may find some of the scenes in tonight's episode disturbing. Yeah, it's difficult, isn't it? Because that just sort of gives away the entire game. You can't, you can't say that. Um, you almost need a, um, like a um, football results kind of thing of, <laughs> if you don't want to hear any spoilers related to um, content warnings, <laughs> please turn away yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. Because this will give it away. Viewers who but, <laughs> who have switched off a life sport machine may find certain scenes in tonight's episode distressing. So yeah, I was um, I was very interested in the fact that the children wanted to stay, and the fact the doctor wasn't surprised by that. Particularly, yeah, the children want to stay. Okay, very good. Very, yeah, very, very good. What? No, sure about that. Yeah. So, th- and this is where we cut back to the escape room. Where yes. Doctor Death is really going after Jason with with the axe. Oh, there was the um, cut to the um, star frame, wasn't there? Oh, there with was the ice yeah. skating picture at that point yeah. as well. So we see that such a big deal that that, that day out. There's the star. There's the star. Yeah. yeah, and so we're cutting between now where things are starting to get unplugged. So the reality in the escape room is very fragile um yes this is obviously um, losing he's getting strangled like losing his ability to breathe properly this is tom cruise running down the corridor in the vanilla sky isn't it yes you've realized that it's all yeah there's something there's this weird stuff going on things are kind of falling apart um yeah and he's trying to escape he tries to escape down the corridor i don't know where he thinks that corridor goes no um don't go into the light. Um, yeah, maybe that's a maybe it's a good thing he was dragged back out of there. If that was the light, yeah. So he's dragged back, and he's sh- now he's shouting, "Let me out! Let me out!" And the, and I guess that him being strangled by Doctor Death is the ventilator being switched off, and him struggling to breathe. Mm-hmm. We can see the the bolus is being administered for the muscle relaxant yeah and then he's back on the radio i need a clue <laughs> yeah <laughs> in the midst of all that you got a clue i mean it's a bit of es- trouble here oh this is still an escape room <laughs> <laughs> and Entering it's been staring him in the face all along i think that's a bit <laughs> a bit much staring you in the face if you look at the word exit that you would expect to see on a door <laughs> yeah in and read it backwards in the mirror yeah um in roman numerals there's something here that felt like it possibly should have been the last episode mm. where he says in fact, it's a nine number nine number nine wait did he just say something <laughs> <laughs> didn't like it i didn't like that no. Number nine. Number Wait, nine. did he just say something? It felt a little trite. Oh. I didn't, yeah. I, I just didn't like it. I didn't like the number nine. Interesting. Just, yeah, yeah. It felt a little on the nose. I just, obviously about two seconds later, when his eyes opened, like I'd forgotten about not liking that that much, mm. but there was something I didn't no, like. I, d- about I know that what night. you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Number a little nine. bit too. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to find out that everything that has happened in nine series has all happened inside the brain of someone who was trapped in a coma? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. That was- <laughs> If I was to hope for an ending to this, that would be it. It was all just a dream. It was a, be. it's a J.R. Dallas ending. Yeah. Um, that would be great. Abre los ojos. Open your eyes. <laughs> yeah. There is. And that, the sound of the unlocking and the exit sign going from red to green. Oh, that was nice. Or is it... <laughs> Let me out! Let me out! Let go of the side, Dad. So, what do you think then? What are you? I don't know. Was that him waking up, or was that one last 
bodily spasm before dying. Oh. Oh. I hadn't even... That was Is he not... dead? <laughs> Mate, <laughs> because was, I'm that sorry. That never occurred to me. I'm sorry. You can't have that and just... Oh, it's all. it was all all right in the end. I thought this was a happy ending. I did as well, but you you can't count out the possibility that this was not a happy ending. You're right. You are right. Because he might have escaped just to die. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. If you want, we can just say, yeah, great, happy ending. I don't think he did. I... Okay. That's fine. Okay. No, I, that's, I like that that ambiguity. That's nice. He could have. He. It might. That's nice. We don't know. Yeah. We just don't know. There's no way of knowing which direction we are going, or which way the river's flowing. <laughs> All right, Willie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Anything else to say about this? I, don't, I think we've done a fairly good job of reflecting on it as we went this time. Yeah. It was it had um that you said the other day, it had Christine vibes. It was Christine vibes. And actually maybe it has got the gut punch. <laughs> well now you've just introduced that now. <laughs> have yeah. I just punched your gut? You have. Sorry, mate. It, it had a gut punch, but it had it didn't have the like the instant tearful thing at the end of Christine. No, I didn't burst into tears at the end of this one like I always do. And with the the Reese character in that being this weird bleed from, mm -hmm. well, everything's a bleed, isn't it? But yeah, bleed from real life into the, into the subconscious. But someone had, someone had sent us an email, hadn't they talking about the links back into other episodes? They had, um, over the course of the series. Um, and I think that's an interesting idea that there are sort of callbacks, thematic callbacks and things. And I think we've, you've, you've alluded to, it, and I think we've spotted things a couple of times now that it feels like there, there is a little bit of a, a greatest hits. Yeah. I think they were, so they were stuff. putting a parallel to series one. Um, okay. Yes. Sardines was the, the fi trapped on fire kind of, aspect yeah they said i think they openly admit they were struggling with a little bit with some of it and some of it felt like a bit of a stretch but I, I i do i do feel like either consciously or subconsciously there is a bit of a let's bring let's bring the old hits out one more time there are quite active nods hmm. to other episodes yeah i don't think they could have written any of these episodes and not spotted that themselves if it hadn't no. been on purpose no, exactly. Um, exactly. So we're kind of um, we're barreling towards the end of this series. It's going too fast. It's like I feel like it, it's Wednesday before I know it again, and I I need more time to savor this final series. I, I I don't like the prospect of never having an episode to watch for the first time again. That's true. That, that's never going to happen. I um I don't know how it passed me by the whole final episode setup that there's a cinema screening of it is that on the night yeah there's some theories flying around about what that's going to entail I'm not sure I'm not sure who it was that said it but this is what kind of switched me onto the fact that this was going on was this kind of suggestion that are the audience part of a live BBC stream of the last episode of Inside Number Nine that is happening inside screen number nine of Leicester Square Theatre? <laughs> amazing. Oh. <laughs> when we're all sat at home watching something unfold in that cinema screen. And if anyone's got an in and can sort us out with a couple of tickets to that. 
because somehow we managed to miss that this was happening. I didn't. Need, I wasn't aware of that. No, no I, I'm glad that this is news to you this evening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Terrible fans. Yeah, I, I went onto the wait list for tickets earlier. The wait list has been exceeded, and there's no longer a thing anymore. <laughs> I'm not surprised. But yeah, that's so that's a thing. Mm. There is also the on the IMDb thing for inside number nine episode nine episode six of series nine is an image of the buses again oh is that back (laughs) are they just is this whole thing just going to be reese and steve there that opening screen with the on the buses thing appearing and everyone cheering and clapping and (laughs) that's i really just watch that episode i really hope there isn't and not to you know, I know lots of people have still got their hopes <laughs> like completely pinned on a I buses. don't know why. <laughs> why? I don't know. Is it purely out of... I thought it might be quite funny and then we thought it was happening and so now I'm insistent that it needs to be a thing because I don't feel like it's the sort of thing that anyone would be... Why would you clamour for any kind know. of episode? Like, well, there's, there's there's quite a lot of people who, who say, well, yeah, I'm not bothered about the buses, but I just wanted to see them, like Robin Asquith and them work together. I wanted to see him okay. appear in but, something. And I, I think that's maybe retroactively fitting the thing. Yeah. Of like, oh, yeah. I'm just disappointed they didn't work. To, I don't know. I don't want to, you know, slag people off, but... <laughs> It just oh, feels like it. strange, strange kind of reasoning and yeah. ways of fitting stuff in. No, I hope, I hope it's not. Or I hope they're led to believe that it is and then it isn't. Like they arrive and there's like big bus props outside and things. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's just another game show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With Bradley Walsh. Oh, he hasn't been in one, has he? No. In fact, most people haven't, really, if you were to take... <laughs> <laughs> no, most people haven't. <laughs> most people have Robin Asquith hasn't. We haven't. Uh, we haven't. Never been in one. Maybe we are all going to be in one. Mm-hmm. Maybe That's everyone good. except for the people at Leicester Square Cinema. I don't know how that will work, but... <laughs> <laughs> how, are we, how are they filming this? <laughs> Incredible iPhones. <laughs> iPhones. Ree Shearsmith invented the iPhone as a means to put a camera in everyone's home. That's what this is all about. <laughs> so, <very good. laughs> <laughs> so that would be the final twist of Inside Number Nine. Yeah. We're all in it except for the people who thought they were. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a good place to end this. <laughs> This podcast, this. <laughs> yeah. Um, I did mention the email address and Twitter twice last week, by the way. Did you? Yeah. You went back and checked? Well, I edited, I edited the episode, so... Okay. Checking I, is a contingent just, part of that. I, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Could have fooled Spo- me with some of them. It's supposed to be. <laughs> supposed to be. Um, okay, so I had a breakdown. Good. Yeah, you just drifted off. I did. I don't know where I went. <laughs> no. Make it clear. Zeta. Okay, well, yeah, if you... I mean, we will be doing our traditional wrap-up episode. I haven't actually mentioned that bit through you this haven't. entire series. Are you sure? I think you did. No, I think you have. Okay. You did last time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we will be doing a wrap-up episode of the series at the end, so we'll be uh, talking about anything that you send to us via email. A quiet night inside no nine at gmail.com or via Twitter. Though it's hard to sort of get everything that's sent to us via Twitter, but please do get in touch via Twitter anyway. Uh, at AQNIN9. Um, and yeah, we'll talk about your theories, things that have been noticed that maybe we haven't noticed or corrections and that kind of thing. That'd be great. Don't ask um, for corrections. No, I'm not asking for corrections. I'll, I'll take that out. And if you fancy dropping us a donation to help support the hosting um, costs, then 
there'll be a PayPal link in the show notes. Um, so yeah, I reiterate a big thank you to David Renshaw and Gemma Archer, who were very kind and donated this week. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a good week. Bye. Bye. Please. Please, I need my last clue. It's been staring you in the face all along. Did you say something?